Hi guys, a great big good morning to you. Let me see if you guys can. Okay, <laughs> that looks a little better. So good morning guys from the entrepreneur classroom and um, I'm Shani Simon Godfrey and I just want to give honor to the woman of God that um, Grace, the admin that invited me over to be with you guys today. I'm excited to be here. Comment if you guys can hear me, see me and everything is good. All right, guys. So, perfect. Yep, you can hear me. So, hi, good morning, Grace. And I'm just telling the <laughs> Entrepreneur Classroom family how excited I am to be here with you guys. And thank you for allowing me to be on your platform. So, guys, let me introduce myself and we'll dive on in. And we'll dive on in. So, my name is Shani Salmon Godfrey. Good morning. My name is Shani Salmon Godfrey, and I am the founder and CEO of Elevation TV Network and executive producer of the Gifted TV Show, al uh, along with many other businesses like Legacy Consulting Firm. Yes, I'm a serial entrepreneur, <laughs> but I'm here to share some of my um, experience with you guys and just to help us transform. So I'm going to be talking about the entrepreneurial mindset and transformation. So we're going to talk about the mindset that entrepreneurs are supposed to have and how do we transform to get there. So when I'm finished with you guys today, there is five mindsets that I want you guys to be aware of and how to navigate through them when those mindsets come at you because all of us go through these phases at one time or the other. So that's the perfectionist mindset, the sabotaging mindset, um, the fear of letting go mindset, the servant mindset, and the busybody mindset. <laughs> yes, guys, the busy body. So I'm here to get you guys fire burning again for your business to so refuel your passion because that's why we do what we do as entrepreneur. You have to have the passion for your business. So I'm here just to relight that fire for your business. So let's start with business everybody in this group either own a business or run a business or in some professional um business that you serve as a key role or some shape or form like that so knowing your why every time i do different um workshops or whatever i'm doing I always come back to the why. Why are we doing this? Because if we don't know the why we're doing it, we're kind of just going through the motion and the results will show. So always know your why. Come back to why am I in business? Is it for myself? Is it for money? Is it for my children? Everybody have a reason why they do what they do and we have to remember that. Guys, I'm also a college professor and I have the opportunity to work with a lot of different mindsets, a lot of different people and the struggle that I see with my students and their adult is the mind. They don't know why they're there. They're just doing it because they know something needs to change. And nine out of the 10, unless we fix that, they're not going to last. It's the same thing for your business. So let's move to um, you are your brand. You are your brand and most entrepreneurs struggle or they're not where they want to be and no matter how big our business is, our goal is always to grow, always to elevate, right? You hear elevation everywhere now. <laughs> Thus, <laughs> my network, I'm a poster child for elevation, elevate, elevate, elevate and transform. But we can't elevate until something is transformed. We have to first transform before we can elevate. So let's talk about... Um, we are our brand. That's when the two becomes one. Most entrepreneurs are an entrepreneur and then they are whatever they do. If they're a teacher, they're a teacher. If they're a, um, a counselor, they're a counselor. If they are a, a um, financial advisor, that's what they do. They'll have their job and then they'll have their business and they separate the two and now they're struggling between the two mindsets and they're struggling between the two personalities. So you are your brand. As an entrepreneur, we are the same person when we are working our business or we are at work, we are at school, we're at church, we're in the grocery store, we are everywhere. People always say the um, 
the positive mindset, right? The law of attraction, positive mindset, you see it, you think it, right? The vision, make it plain. No matter how you look at it, it always come back to what we think, what we believe is what we manifest, is what we see. So we have to be consistent with the message that we're sending as entrepreneur. On my network, I have the opportunity to speak with, I mean, like tons of different entrepreneurs, whether they are book writers, um, show producers, um, counselors, financial planners, pastors, preachers, the work. So I get to see a bird's eye view of the different types of businesses, the different types of roles, the different types of hats. Now, the one thing that I see with a lot of them is when it comes to the introduce yourself portion. When I say introduce yourself, it's hard. It's hard for them to introduce themselves, but they do so much. And just like when we're applying for a job, they always ask us that one question. That everybody, oh, they're going to ask me this question. Tell me about yourself. That's the same thing our clients, our customers, our patients. And I'm in healthcare. I teach college, but healthcare. So doctors, I work with them too. And our patients, they all want to know about us. They want to know, doc, what can you do for me? How long have you been doing this? Give me some examples of some patients that you help, you know, so I have proof that you can help me. So we have to be consistent. No matter where we're, we go, we are our brand. We are the face of our brand. We ruin our businesses with our outside personalities. Here's what I mean. You can be great when you're doing a speaking engagements, when you're meeting with your clients, when you're producing, when you're doing your design, because, you know, I work with graphic designing too, and we can be great with that. But if our personality is not great, people will see it. They will know. I never knew, realized how big but small <laughs> the entrepreneurial, <laughs> um, the entrepreneurial, um, what you call it, network is that everybody knows somebody that knows somebody that ultimately going to know you. So we have to be careful that we're not being two different people because they'll say, oh, I know Shani, I work with Shani, I love Shani, Shani's great. On the other hand, my students might be saying, no, she's not a nice person. She's a terrible human being. And that's going to trickle into my business. It's going to trickle into my business. We have to be the same in our business that we are everywhere else in our life. And that will give us a better brand because we're branding, right? And people think of branding as just your logo, your business cards, your website. You are your brand. You are your most powerful brand. A lot of brands catch on because we believe it. We see it. They live it. It's like... um. Juanita Bynum, when she came out and she said, say yes, then everybody's like, say yes. And then Lisa Nicole, she said, yes, yes. Now everybody's saying yes, yes. And I find myself even teaching my students. I'm like, yes, yes. And I'm like, wait, wait, <laughs> wait, not my brand, not my, <laughs> not my brand. That's how it should be with us. So we need to send that message out. No matter where we go, we are the same because we'll light people on fire and when we light people on fire for our brand that's when they want to work with us because we believe in the message that we're sending we believe in the work that we're doing so let's move on to the diamond concept right the diamond concept and then i'll get into my mindsets and then i'm gone i'm trying to give you guys as much <laughs> as i can give you <laughs> before i have to go so the diamond mindset I always tell my students that they ask me, Miss, why do I teach? And I tell them that teaching is my passion. And that's why as a business owner, I everything that I do, I surround that with, with um, teaching. That's playing to my strengths, right? That's what I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about teaching. So I always make sure that whatever I do in my life, I talked about that consistent voice that I am my brand. If my brand is a transformation speaker, then I'm going to make sure that everything I do in my life surround that. That not only build me up and build up my skills but that is making sure that my brand stay consistent and I and they ask me why do I do it so I always tell them that I love diamonds I love shiny things and the demographics of students that I that we see because we are post-secondary education they are the ones that people tell them they can never go to college they dropped out of high school they dropped out of some dropped out of middle school some of them that's their last opportunity they you know they they dropped out of traditional colleges and so forth and so on so when I 
I'm with my students, I want to see transformation. Transformation have to happen. And textbook definition of transformation is changing the physical structure, right? It's change, not physical structure, it's to change the structure. We're changing a structure or we're changing the makeup. We're changing some things. And in business, we, our goal is to be to change some things. So I always come back to the diamonds. I love shiny things, but diamonds don't just happen overnight. Diamonds, we have to dig for it, right? We got to dig through the dirt, dig through the mud, dig through all of that to get the diamonds. When we get the diamonds, we have to apply the pressure, right? We got to put fire and heat and pressure and pressurize those diamonds. And that's when we get the shine. That's how we get it to shine, right? But as entrepreneur, let's talk about the perfectionist mindset. The, perfect, the perfectionist mindset comes from I have to be perfect. And we see businesses out there and business women that we love and we admire and business men that we love and admire. And our goal is we want to be on that level, right? We want to produce the content that they produce. We, no matter what we sell, our products, our content, we want to be great. We want it to be great. But we have to understand that that is not is going to work against us. Yes, be aware that where we're at right now is not where we want to be. Be aware that we need to change. That's when transformation happens, recognizing that something needs to change. And then we change it, right? But if we are built on it has to be perfect, our business will never grow. If you are thinking about launching a business, you're not there yet, you will never be able to successfully launch um, well as grow your business unless you realize that nobody's perfect. No matter how big that business look, we all have our flaws. We all have our... Uh, for lack of a better word, dirty laundry that we keep covered up real good and spray some Febreze on it, <laughs> you know, and so we get to put it in the laundry. <laughs> so don't worry about what we see. We always see them and think that, you know what, well, they're doing it this way and I guess I can't produce that product or launch that product because mine don't look like theirs. Use the gift that you got. Start with where you are. Work on your level and grow have a written plan of how you're gonna grow because of course we're not gonna stay the same because we have to elevate right we have to transform but at the same time we have to work at each level and be the best that we can at that level if we try to to yes excellence over perfection yes uh, you know what you're talking <laughs> you're talking yes we have to understand that be excellent at what we are doing at that moment. If, okay, I'm going to use me as an example because I like to tell on myself first. I started blogging. Y'all, you hear this accent? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a country girl from Jamaica with an accent, okay? I've been here forever and a day, but my accent's not going anywhere. A few years ago, if you asked me if Shani would be speaking or Shani would be writing or Shani would be teaching, I would say no way. Because it was always that, oh, because I don't have perfect English and my grammar wasn't perfect. <laughs> yeah, I'm country, all right? <laughs> my grammar wasn't perfect that I couldn't speak. I couldn't do speaking engagement. I couldn't do, I couldn't sit up in front of a class of 20 to 30 students and, 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 and lecture them on, on healthcare. That was my industry. That was my field. I was great at the hands-on portion, but I felt like I couldn't do it because that's perfectionist, right? When I confronted that perfectionist mindset, I had to build a plan for myself to get me out of it. My plan was, and my goal was, I want to speak, I want to teach, I know that I can add more value to just humanity, right? Because we all have something to offer. It's just how we offer it. So I had to know I'm going to do as much speaking. So I started my Facebook channel and I started coming on every Saturday consistently for a whole year. And then when I started doing that, I got shifted into teaching. It was easier to teach because, hey, I've been teaching, right, online. It's not the same, but it still give you the same exposure, right? You had to be ready, prepare your material, the whole works. Once I overcame that mindset, then here comes the next mindset that we have to be aware of. The sabotaging mindset. I was sabotaging myself, right? 
I fight through perfectionists and I'm sabotaging myself saying, okay, well, you know what? My videos are good. I'm getting great feedback, but I know I need to elevate. So now here come another transformation moment, right? So I start sabotaging myself, launch the blog. I'm like, no, my grammar is not great. Nobody's going to read it. But everybody's on my phone all day, every day asking me for advice. I was burned out. From a business standpoint, from a teacher standpoint, from a wife, everybody. All the hats I wear was just like, boom. <laughs> so I said, why don't I put all that content on my blog? Here's the link. Go help yourself because now as entrepreneurs, we have to make sure that we are transforming the people that we're working with no matter where we go, right? So with the blog, my first article, I literally hit send and ran away, went to bed. <laughs> I do it all overnight so I can go to sleep and rest my mind. But when I start getting the positive feedback, that started putting that pressure off. Okay, well, I got to produce more content. Then I started sabotaging myself saying, you know what? Yeah, I want to focus more on my video, not so much on my writing because writing is, is not as easy as it looks and I don't have the time and all of these mindset. And I started feeding into that where I didn't put out, put out any blog posts for months at a time. And then I had to realize that I'm sabotaging myself. Use what you have and be great at the level you're on. If the level you're on is producing one content a month then do it just make sure that your one content is so good that it can hold them off and next month it's like breakfast lunch and dinner if you have a solid breakfast you're good till lunch right you have a solid lunch you're good till dinner right it's the same concept once we realize the stage that we're in in our entrepreneurial journey then we can grow but we have to first recognize in order to transform so fear of letting go Fear of letting go come from, as an entrepreneur, our goal is to grow, get more clients, get more viewers, get more sales, get more co contracts, get more. Whatever it is, we, we have to get more. <laughs> if we don't get more, we don't have a business, right? We have to get more. But with that being said, we have to delegate. We have to build a team. We have to put people in place that will free us up to run our business, to grow our business, to make sure that our business is consistent and all of that needs monitoring. It needs us there to make sure that we're watching it, right? But as entrepreneurs, a lot of times we don't let go. We are the producer, the writer, the marketing director, the financial um, CFO. We are the, the, the everything. Every role in that business, we play it because we are afraid that if I let this go, it's like my baby. If I let my baby go, they are not going to feed my baby. My baby is going to be my nurse. I don't want my baby to die. I don't want them to beat my baby. I don't, right. So we hold on so strongly that we're not growing because we can only do one thing. And letting go don't necessarily mean to hire 52 people. It can mean automate. And Grace did a list, and I want you guys to go and get that list, is um, the tools that she used because that's something that I believe that every entrepreneur should have is resource. You need to have some resources that you tap into, and a part of that is automate your business automate could automate if you don't have the funds because again we have to be excellent at, at wherever we are and you can't hire people to put them in place for you then you need to get some softwares that will do it that will free up your time to do what you do best all right so we gotta let go we have to let go delegate give it to somebody or get a system but we gotta let go we will never grow if we're holding on to everything Yes, automate. Absolutely. The servant mindset. The servant. Matter of fact, let's talk about the busybody and then we talk about the servant and then we'll wrap it up at the servant. Um, so the busybody. Every entrepreneur are prone to being the busybody. Here's what that means. We are great. We're strategist, we're strategists, right? We're masterminds at what we do. We we are the expert. We are the subject matter expert. But with that being said, we have to be mindful of all the opportunities that approach us or we approach. Your subject matter expert, a lot of people, places, and things are going to want to get you involved. But with that being said, you can't be too busy because again, that consistent message. We can't be doing content and writing and uh, transformation and now we start selling cotton candy it's random because now we're branding you as that subject matter expert now you're doing some random stuff 
Yes, you might be great at it because you have the skills to do it. You have the resources, you have the tools, you have the network, you have the traffic, the audience, so forth and so on to do it. But you can't do everything just because you, you know how to do it. We have to be able to streamline our brand and say here's what my brand should look like five years from now and goals guys we have to set them up in advance because business it moves and it moves quickly one year goal three year goal five year goal monthly goal weekly goal daily goal sometimes we got to go as far as to every hour what I'm gonna be doing we got to get we got to get there we absolutely have to get there so we got to be mindful and as for me, like I'm a serial entrepreneur, y'all. I've been in business since forever and a day. And as I'm exposed to different things, I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. And because I'm a strategist, my mind is giving me 52 different ways that I can improve that business. Now, like I want to do it, but I have to tell myself, girl, stop. This is what you do. This is what you're going to do. This is what it is. This is what it's going to be like. Big picture. And when you set your goal far in advance, it gets you to come back to your big picture, right? Write the vision, make it plain, or the, the vision board, no matter how you look at it, it's all telling you the same thing. Put your vision down because when that busybody mindset start coming back to you, you can see exactly where you should be and what you should be working on so we're not all over the place and just look like, uh, I don't really know what you do. The servant mindset. This is where I want all of us entrepreneurs, the whole entrepreneur sisters and brothers to be is the servant mindset the servant mindset is this we serve our patients our clients our students our customers our no matter what you call the people that you sell your services to and some of us are they're professional speakers we pay them to speak right no matter what we do we got to realize that we're serving them it's not about us it's about them when it's about us we want to be well known. We want to be famous. We want to go viral. People know it. And people don't want to work with you if you don't have their best interests at heart. So we have to come back to what am I doing to add value to whoever it is that I'm offering my services to. When we get to that place, our businesses will grow because people will believe in your message. They'll believe in your brand. They will believe in you. They will refer people to you. A lot of times, some people, and, and one thing about it as being a servant, we have to understand that we're going to always give more than what we're receiving. Especially when we're starting off at entrepreneurs, we offer free services, right? Don't give away everything for free now because you, you know, you're know you not an entrepreneur if you're not making profit, <laughs> you know, making any money if you're not growing. And a lot of times, entrepreneurs, and let me say this, a lot of times, entrepreneurs, not everybody's in it for that tangible dollar at that time. It could be a YouTuber, right? They want viewers because that's going to build them up to when they start making their money. So no matter where it goes, we want referrals, right? And people won't refer you if you're not serving them. It could be your blog. You got to serve in your blog. Whatever content you produce shouldn't be about, oh, yeah, here's what I'm doing. Here's where I'm going. Unless you are well-known, 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 like up there, well-known, red carpet, well-known, then you could do that. But if you're trying to build, you need to be, you need to be talking their language, helping them, serving them. Or they won't read your blog because nobody want read to read your diary pretty much. It's like reading your diary if it's all about you. If you're a pastor, you're a preacher, I do all of that too. If you, every time you go on the pulpit, you talk about me, 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 me. Here's what I'm doing. Here's my church. Here's my members. Here's mine, 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 mine. Well, you not going to have much members for long. It's the same concept. No matter what services we offer, we got to come back to serve. When we do that, people will refer people to us and we should grow. Our goal as entrepreneurs is to get so much more um, inbound marketing. And I'm just going to give you a little tidbit and I'm done before I go somewhere else because I love to teach. That's what I do. <laughs> so inbound marketing mean you produce content and it brings traffic to you versus you always have to go out there and pay and pay advertising pay advertising pay advertisement when we shift to we produce the work and it's bringing traffic to us that way versus guerrilla marketing we're going out there giving out business cards um 
selling uh, not selling giving up business cards and all that hardcore marketing then we're doing something wrong we have to shift to people are referring people are sharing the videos tagging friends um sharing your ebook sharing your article all that that's that's when we know that we're right in the right place of serving so guys if you have questions send them over let me answer your questions and um that i'm gonna yeah and then get out of here because i do want to respect the um on the platform that I'm on with timing. So if you have questions, send them over to me again. And if you miss my introduction, I'm Shani Salmon Godfrey, serial entrepreneur, um, um, founder and CEO of Elevation TV Network, executive producer of the Gifted TV shows, amongst others, <laughs> amongst other hats <laughs> and other businesses that I do. So go ahead and send them on over. And just to recap, we have to be careful of perfectionist mindset sabotaging mindset, fear of letting go mindset, the servant mindset, and the business, and the busybody mindset. Those are the five mindsets that we want to be careful of because we all go through them at one stage or the other in our businesses. We talk about, um, sorry, we talk about you and your brand. The two becomes one. You are your brand, so be careful of the message that you're sending. Keep it consistent in all walks of your life. Um, yes, and know your why. Always know your why, why you're doing it. And that will be, and that will give you guys the results that you guys want. And true transformation comes from recognizing the change, put a plan in place to get to your, um, your goals. So guys, it was truly a honor. Leave your comments, even if you're watching the playback, and I will come on and I will answer your questions or um, reply to your comments. So it was truly a honor being on with you guys, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye, guys.